All right, class, today you're going to be graded on your class participation, so pay attention. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we have this laptop here, a 15-inch 2010 MacBook Pro. And what's special about this video is you guys, the watchers, are going to help me decide if this needs to be upgraded and what we should do with it. So let's talk about, first of all, if it should be upgraded. So if you follow this channel, then you will have noticed that I've done a lot of uh, upgrade videos for these older style MacBook Pros. If you don't follow this channel, just pause right now, hit that button wherever it is down there, subscribe, and, uh, and follow this channel. It costs you nothing. It makes me happy. So do your good deed for the day. But if you follow this channel, you know I've upgraded a bunch of these. And I love your comments. I am open-minded to all of your comments as long as you're open-minded as well. Some of the comments say, man, this is the best thing ever. I was able to take my old laptop and put some new life into it and get a couple more years out of it. Some people say, this is an absolute waste of money. It's not going to run right. You should just take your money and, and put it somewhere else. And and I will listen to any of those opinions because it's, it's okay. Everybody's got different use cases. If I could afford a brand new M2 processor MacBook Pro, then I wouldn't be upgrading these things, would I? But if you can't, if, if it's just a matter of getting a, squeezing a little bit more life, just a tiny bit more life out of one of these what used to be very expensive machines and getting a couple more years out of them for a couple bucks, then maybe that's the right choice for you. I'm okay with either either situation, and I'm okay with you guys putting down in the comments anything that you want, as long as you're not abusive about it, obviously. Um, so I am open-minded in that case. In this case, this 2010, we're going to decide together if it should be. So, so we're going to take a couple steps here to make that determination. First step is we're going to look at what we're starting with. So we're going to take a look at what it is, what condition it is, um, what the specs are, and know what we're starting with. Step two, we're going to look at what the possible upgrade options are for it, so we can see what what uh, what we can actually buy and put into it, and and uh, determine what parts are out there and what they're going to cost. Step three, we're going to look at the total cost of upgrading it. That would be the cost that it, it, it took to get this in the first place, and then the cost of the individual parts, and come up with the total price of, of what it would cost if we did do the full upgrade. And then step four, we're going to take a look at that cost versus what we could get with that same amount of money. So whatever it costs to buy this or acquire it and buy some parts and upgrade it, let's take that dollar amount and put it up against maybe something that we can find on Marketplace or something we can find at Best Buy or Walmart and see what we think we're going to get the best bang for the buck. So that's going to be the premise of this video. And then if I decide to upgrade it, then there'll be a follow-on video shortly afterwards where I'm going to go ahead and go step-by-step -step through how to upgrade it. And then if we get through all the hardware in that second video, then maybe I'll come back with video number three and upgrade the software because that's one of the one of the things that gets brought up the most is well if you update everything and you put all that money into it and it doesn't run the latest version of Mac OS and it doesn't have the latest security patches then what good is it well I can tell you that it's it's still good but but that's that's again my opinion versus your opinion but can we get a newer version of Mac OS on here than what Apple supports. And if we can, let's go ahead and do that in video number three. So let's go ahead and get started with these steps that, for this first video by seeing what we're starting with. All right, so let's start off with the obvious. We know what it is. It's a 2010 15 inch MacBook Pro. Um, let's look at the physical um, status of it to start with. You can see it's a little dirty, but that's okay. A couple alcohol wipes will clean that up. I don't see any major dents in this at all. And as we flip it over, no major dents or dings. A little bit of stain on there. Again, I can clean that up with some alcohol. Not a big deal. So, so far it's looking in good condition. Let's look at the ports real quick. And I've got a video 
that I will link down below on everything that I look at on a uh, MacBook Pro to see how it looks. And just a, a quick physical inspection of these ports. Looks like they're good to go. Um, I did have it on a charger, so I'm expecting all the lights to light up, which they did. So physical wise, it looks good so far. So let's get, go ahead and open it up and take a look at some of the specs and see what we are starting with. All right, so inside the uh, the keyboard and everything looks good too. Um, so condition wise, physical condition wise, everything's good to go. So let's go ahead and go up to the, oh, the Apple menu here, hit about this Mac and see what we're starting with. So MacBook Pro 15 inch mid 2010, that's what we knew. What options does it have? It's got the 2.4 gigahertz Intel i5. So not the best processor that they had available, but a decent one. Four gigs of memory, DDR3 memory. And let's look at the display because there was a couple options on this display. This is the 15.4 inch 1440 by 900. So it's not a 1080p um, you know, modern display. But this is better than if it was like the 800 um, resolution one. So this is a decent display for this 15 inch. And then storage options. We are looking at a 320 gigabyte SATA disk drive. So, so this is obviously not the best. That's why we see the beach ball there. It's really thinking. Uh, it's really crunched on this old, what would be what, 13, almost 13 year old hard drive and it's still working. So overall, we know what we're starting with. That was step one. So step two is seeing what our options are for upgrading it. So here we are with the Mac Tracker app that I featured on the channel not too long ago. You can check out that video. Um, this is showing the MacBook Pro 15 inch 2010. Obviously it's discontinued. Here's the processor options. So this was the entry level 2.4 gigahertz i5 it goes all the way up to a 2.66 that's probably the i7 this was originally an $1,800 laptop so like I said that these these things started expensive and even 13 years later they're still usable so here's that i5 the m520 is probably what this one is which is not the uh, the fastest processor in the world but I think it's still somewhat uh, performance uh, capable in this day for basic. I mean, you got to have your expectations set. You know, you're not going to be playing modern games on this. You may not be putting the, the latest version of video editing or photo editing software on here. But if you just need a, a laptop to go get around the web, do some emails, do some word processing spreadsheets, this is going to be completely fine. So here's our storage options. Obviously, we're going to find that SATA drive in there that we can swap out with an SSD. So we know already that we can put an SSD in there probably upwards to two terabytes if we wanted to, but really we want to just focus on replacing that 320 with probably a 500 gig. And then here's our memory options. So it's got two PC3 8500 slots, and we did see that they had two two gigabyte modules in there. So you can put two four gigabyte modules in there making a maximum of eight gigabytes I don't think it's going to recognize anything bigger than that. Um, so we can we can double that at least from four to eight. So that's our options. We can't do anything about the the screen. Uh, it looks like there was an upgraded screen, the 1680 by 1050. That would have been nicer. So if that was the i7 version, probably would have been nicer than this 1440 by 900. But at least it's not the the smaller display that you may find the 1280 by 800 on like the 13 inch. As far as what you can do if you plug it into an external display, you can go all the way up to uh, this 2560 by 1600, which is a little bit, bit a little bit bigger than than the 2560 by 1080 that you see on some of the ultra wide uh, monitors. So this will drive not a 4K, but it will drive like a what they call it 2.5K or 1440 monitor. So you can drive a 1440 monitor with it. So if you were using this on your desk, slap that onto a, a monitor and it will give you a little bit better screen than, than what's built in. So uh, I think we are good to go. One thing that this is missing though, since this is, this is a 2010, 
is it's missing that Thunderbolt connection. So it does have Firewire, which is a little antiquated, but it's still pretty fast. It does have two of the USB 2 connectors, but it is missing that, that Thunderbolt connection for that super fast uh, drive speed. So that's what our options are. Most likely you would take, if the battery was good, you would take and replace the hard drive and you would replace the RAM and that's gonna be our options. So let's look real quick. Since I said battery, we're gonna look at our battery real quick, going into system report and then selecting power. Now this was a 1000 cycle rated battery and it's showing here 500 cycles on it. So I've had this unplugged for a while and the battery indicator is still good. So I'm kind of okay with that. I'm not gonna be worried about replacing that battery. So that's gonna save some bucks. And I think this was primarily used by the person that had it before me uh, plugged into the wall. So, so I think the cycle count is, is low enough that we don't need to worry about that for now. Um, so we're just worried really about RAM and hard drive. All right, so we have completed step one and step two. Step one, we looked at what we're starting with. And basically, to sum it up, we've got a good condition, a pretty nice condition laptop physical condition wise with some lower end specs um, so that's what we're starting with step two we looked at what we can upgrade it to the most important thing is going to be replacing that old SATA drive with an SSD drive and then the second would be doubling this RAM to eight gigabytes that's going to make it a little bit more modern and a little bit snappier so that's our two options so step three is finding out what all that would cost now, this particular laptop here well, belonged to a family member, and I upgraded them into a newer one. So they traded, they basically traded this in to me. I gave them a good deal on one that I found, um, actually one that, that we have seen on this channel before. And so basically my investment into this particular laptop here, let's just call it 100 bucks. So I gave them basically some trade-in towards, towards the new one that I gave them a good deal on and I've got about $100 invested into this. Now, I looked up on Amazon to get double the memory to go up to four, uh, two four gig sticks. It costs about $22 right now. Now that's, right now we are in the Black Friday slash Cyber Monday, so you get a couple dollars off because of that. Uh, but I would say anywhere between $22 and $30 to get eight gigabytes of this PC3-8300 which is a 1067 megahertz uh, chip. So that's basically, let's call it 25 bucks. I looked at the hard drives to replace this 320. Now our options on the SSDs would be somewhere in the 240 to 250 range gigabytes, or the next step up would be 480 and 512. So let's just call it 500 gigabytes to replace this. And on Amazon, again, with this Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal going on, we are looking in the about the same price range, about 22 to $30. So let's call that $30. So total investment and in what I would have with this, and this did include a 85 watt uh, MagSafe adapter, which is, it's worth something. Um, worth something because I don't have to buy one. So total investment, if I did those two upgrades, not worrying about the battery yet, we are looking at 100 bucks plus, let's say, 25 plus 30, so about 155 dollars total. So that would be my total investment in getting this up to date as far as it can. Obviously, we can go up to a terabyte or two terabytes on that, but just as as a quick upgrade, making this as snappy as we can, we're looking at 155 dollar investment in a 15-inch MacBook Pro that is obviously pretty old. So this is where you guys start telling me down in those comments below, is this upgraded machine worth 155 bucks? Because the next step we're going to do is we're going to look at a website, a couple websites and see what we can get for that 155 bucks. All right, so here we are at Best Buy and I've done a filter for uh, basically $25 up to $200 to see what we got. Now this is the absolute best time of year to search 
because we are seeing some crazy deals for this Black Friday, Cyber Monday thing. So comparison wise, we're looking at comparisons that we may not see the rest of the year. So take that into consideration if you are shopping some other time than, than the uh, Christmas season. So let's see what we got here. We got a Lenovo IdeaPad 14 inch HD laptop with the Celeron N4020. That is a newer Celeron, but it's still a Celeron. Four gigabytes of memory, 64 gigabytes of eMMC. So that's basically a tiny little chip in here that uh, that is gonna be the, your hard drive, if you wanna call it that. And with 64 gigs, it looks like it's running Windows 11. That 64 gigs is gonna be chewed up half Half, just about half of it's going to be just your Windows itself. So don't expect to have any kind of storage built on there. This type of machine is, for all intents and purposes, no better than a, a Chromebook because you're going to have to be storing everything and accessing everything on the cloud because of that local storage. Now, obviously, if you get some USB ports, you can have some external storage, but you are somewhat limited. 14-inch display. Let's see. I'm going to guess. Let's click into here. I'm going to guess that's going to be that 768 height display. And we are a little sluggish, but that's to be expected with that old hard drive in here. So let's come down to the specifications. And yes, as expected, it's a 1366 by 768 display. Now I've had some criticism in the past on these type of MacBook upgrade videos that no matter what you do to the hardware, if you can't change the resolution of the screen itself, then I've, I've had the criticism that websites are never going to display properly because they're expected to have a 1080p display. Well, if you're worried about that, then this 1366 by 768 display on this laptop, this 14 inch laptop is going to be horrible. And that's compared even to this older um, 900, you know, it's 900 pixel high, uh, display. So if that's your concern, I would say always steer clear of this 1366 display. I, I never buy them. I won't, I won't ever buy a laptop that has that display because it's just horrible. So, but, but you're getting it for 99 bucks. It says it's originally 249 I would never pay $249 for this particular laptop. $99, if, if you just need a Chromebook type laptop, then I would say that's an okay deal. That's, that's a decent deal for a modern laptop. So that's one option. This next one here, this Lenovo Flex 3 Chromebook. This has even a smaller one, 11.6. And I did look at the resolution on this one. It's the same resolution. So it's just a smaller screen, same re resolution, and this is same specs, four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of the eMMC, which is even a, it is a slower type of um, storage, basically, than, than a modern laptop would with an NVMe drive or a SATA, uh, SATA drive would be. So we're looking at the same specs, the only difference really the size of the screen, and this is truly a Chromebook versus a Windows 11 book. So as we scroll down some more, this Asus 14 inch, this is exactly the same as the first Lenovo. It just has the word Asus on it instead of Lenovo. 14 inch, same Celeron, same four gigs, same 64 gigs. And then as we scroll down, another Lenovo Chromebook, same as the other one, just a different color. Another Asus, this is the same as the one up, up above. This is just silver instead of black. Here's a Peacock Blue and here's a Rose Gold. So basically we got the same <coughs> same laptop, a couple different names, couple different colors, same specs. The N4020, four gigs of memory and 64 gigs. So the overall question is, is this type of machine a better deal than this type of machine. If we if we spent $150, $155, somewhere in that price range, which would be the, the better deal? So now's the time for the class participation and those comments below let me know. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a Chromebook slash Windows Chromebook, if you will, laptop? 
which obviously is smaller, lighter, more portable, all that good stuff, more energy efficient because it is modern and it's tiny? Or would you rather have this MacBook Pro 15 inch with eight gigs of memory, 500 gigs of SSD storage, and a bigger, nicer display? So let me know in those comments below and I will take those into consideration. So that is gonna wrap up this episode. We have taken those four steps. Step one, see what we're starting with. Step two, see where it can get. Step three, see what it's gonna to cost to get there. And step four, compare that up against what Best Buy has. And I'm gonna guess that Walmart would have the same exact type of options. They may be different brands, they may be different colors, but it's all gonna be the same type of laptop. Um, the only other option that you would have is taking that $150 to Marketplace or Craigslist and seeing what you can get. Um, I don't think it's going to be much different. I don't think you're going to find a, a gaming laptop or a modern MacBook Pro for $150 on Marketplace. If you would, then I'd probably be snagging them up anyways. So that's going to wrap up this episode. Please, in those comments below, let me know what you think. What What is your philosophy on would this be worth upgrading this 12 13 year old laptop getting up to as as high as specs as it can um, is that worth it i'm going to take those into consideration um, and then again if depending on on what i find if i do upgrade this look for episode two of this series where i go through step-by-step -step process of how to upgrade this 2010 15 inch macbook pro by installing the new hard drive and the new memory. And then if I get that far, look for episode three, which will be updating all the software to see if we can get modern Mac OS and modern versions of Chrome and Safari, all up to date and security patched running on this old laptop. So thank you as always for watching. Make sure you do comment below. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up. If you like this type of stuff and you want to see where this goes and you want to see more of this type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace out and geek out.